Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and in this exciting two-part episode I will be giving you the top 10 dogs that look like wolves. Hello and welcome to the first in the series of Animal Watch Facts. Today I will be doing a top 10 countdown on the world's dogs that look most like a wolf. Weight, height, temperament, a most similarity to the actual wild wolf. You want a wolf in your house? Well, I'll tell you what's possible. <coughs> You want a wolf as a pet, but let's face it, that's not going to happen, as many countries and states won't allow it. It's also cruel, as wolves don't want to be in a small house with you. Think of Tiger King, not a cool look. Their wild characteristics will terrorise your home. So although affectionate, I should know, as I've been on the receiving end of it, these are wild animals and they don't want to be inside your house. So what's the alternative? Here's the top 10 most authentic dogs that look and sometimes act like wolves. And the best thing of all, you can have one. So in reverse order, at number 10, the Samoid. The Samoid is a fluffy and cute sled dog originating from Siberia, used for herding and pulling sleds. Height, 48 to 60 centimeters, which is 19 to 24 inches. The wolf is 66 to 81 centimeters, 26 to 32 inches. So the wolf is by far the taller of the two. And the Samoid is really nowhere close to the height of even the smallest wolves. Weight, 16 to 30 kilogram, depending on sex, as the males are heavier. The wolf weighs in at 23 to 80 kilograms. So despite some people thinking the Samoid is wolfy, he is really like the wolf's pint-size wannabe. Look. The Samoid looks a little like a Labrador when wet, due to the sharp stop at the base of his muzzle, where it meets the skull and his head is much smaller than a wolf's. He has small ears though, so visually the ears are far more in proportion to other breeds like the German Shepherd, who has massive ears. So this is why people feel that they are wolfy looking. His muzzle is much shorter though than the wolf and very cutesy in size and shape. The wolf is in no way cutesy looking. So Samoid loses points here. Tail. The Samoid has a tightly curled tail, which is bred into them so the tails would not get caught in the sleds. This is the polar opposite to a wolf who has an elegant straight tail and uses it to communicate. The Samoid is unable to properly communicate with his tight tail, a part to wag with it, so loses points here. The Samoid is super fluffy and has a very soft, dense coat. The wolf is only heavy coated in the winter and his guard hairs are very thick and wiry to the touch. Whereas a Samoy's coat feels like cotton wool to the touch. So coat wise, nothing like one another. Temperament. The Samoid is sweet, affectionate and confident with a bark that will drive people up the wall. His character is the polar opposite of the wolf who can be nervous and untrusting of strangers. The wolf will not yip and yap like a Samoid and look after himself rather than run to humans for affection. So hence why our beautiful and cutesy Fluffball comes in 10th place with a wolfy score of 10%, as really more of a cutesy fluffy large lap dog than anything close to a wolf. Sorry Samoid lovers, but it's true. So at number nine, the German Shepherd. The German Shepherd is a herding dog bred in Germany in 1899. Rumor has it that he has some recent wolf content anyway, so perhaps could be called a watered down wolf dog. So size, how does he compare to a wolf? 
He is 55 to 65 centimetres tall, which is 21 to 25 inches. The wolf is 66 to 81, which is 26 to 32 inches. So the wolf is by far the taller of the two. Weight. The German Shepherd generally weighs 22 to 40 kilograms, depending on whether it's a male or a female. The wolf weighs in at 23 to 80. So smaller wolves can be a similar weight, but the largest are way bigger than a German Shepherd. Look. The German Shepherd, despite many people comparing them to wolves, in fact has a much smaller, flatter skull resulting in the ears looking far larger than a wolf's. A wolf has high hips and long legs, whereas many German Shepherds have low hips. The tail of a German Shepherd is long and can drag along the ground. A wolf has a higher, shorter tail and it does not touch the ground. The coat. Some Shepherds are long-coated and some are short-coated. They keep the look of their coat all year round, whereas the wolf has an extremely thick, dense and waterproof coat in the winter and drops his coat almost completely in the summer and looks like a very different animal. Temperament. You couldn't get any more different between a German Shepherd and a wolf. A Shepherd is extremely responsive to human commands, can be easily trained, but is also extremely vocal a trait which our almost completely silent wolf does not possess. A wolf is independent and self-serving. A small woof sound is rarely heard, except for the odd warning signal to his pack. A German Shepherd rarely howls like a husky or a sled dog. So out of 10, our German Shepherd comes ninth with a 20% wolfiness score. A beautiful and very trainable dog but in fact, not that similar to a wolf. In eighth place, we have the Canadian Eskimo dog. The Canadian Eskimo dog is a rugged sled dog with very ancient roots, which some people may suggest links it to recent wolf blood. He lives in Canada, but traveled there with ancient tribes who originally came from Siberia. The Canadian Eskimo is 50 to 70 centimetres, which is 20 to 28 inches. The wolf is 26 to 32 inches in height, so the Canadian Eskimo isn't that badly compared to the wolf. He isn't that much less, but the females look generally a lot smaller. Weight, 18 to 40 kilograms, depending on male or female whereas the wolf weighs in at 23 to 80 kilogram, depending on the type of wolf. So the largest wolves are double the largest male Canadian Eskimo. Also, the Canadian Eskimo females are very small in comparison to the males. Not a trait that the wolf has, where males and females are not dramatically different in size and weight. The look. The dogs look quite wolfy in appearance, with their small ears in relation to their skull and muzzle and their thick coats make their face furred up, making the ears look small again. But again, the wolf's skull will be far larger. The coat coloration is varied and not wolf-like, as the Canadian Eskimo comes in more dog-like colors, some with patches and spots even. The eyes are beautifully slanted, which can give a wolf-like look. The coats again are generally all round seasonally thick, whereas the wolf will drop his winter coat to his shorter coated summer variation. The tails of the Canadian Eskimo dog are sled dog-like and curled over their backs, the polar opposite of our wolf's tail, thus removing essential wolf-like communication. Temperament. These dogs are friendly, so not like a wary wolf, but like a wolf will more than likely wreck your house, as people have told me. These dogs, like wolves, have energy and power and do not want to be indoors. They want to run and work, so their lust for freedom and travel is similar to a wolf. The males will mark quite a lot, like a wolf will too. They prefer to howl, but will bark too. And the reasons they do it is generally excitement for sledding, unlike the wolf who will only use it for essential pack communication. 
Thus, this is why our beautiful and rare Canadian Eskimo comes eighth, with only 30% wolfiness. Sorry, not quite wolfy enough, but we still love you. In seventh place, we have the Alaskan Malamute. Now most people who see one and have no experience with wolves will think that they are looking at a large fluffy wolf. But you couldn't be further from the truth. These massive freight pulling sled dogs have as much wolf in them as a chihuahua. They are ancient, that's for sure, but kept their wolf-like looks due to being used in the cold Arctic regions, which require dogs to have similar physical attributes as the wolf such as sharp erect ears, well-furred coats, independence and toughness in zero temperatures. Height, 58 to 64 at the withers, which is 23 to 25 inches, with a few gigantic specimens coming in at around 28 inches. The wolf is 26 to 32 inches and some Arctic varieties taller, so smaller wolves match the huge Malamute. Yet our leggy wolf still is far taller than our massive cuddly bear. Weight, 32 to 43 kilograms, which is pretty weighty, whereas our wolf weighs in at 23 to 80. So the largest wolf and his dense bones still beat our massive fluffball Malamute, whereas the smallest wolf is lighter than a female Malamute. Look, as I mentioned previously, Many inexperienced people will think a Malamute looks like a wolf, but his head is far stubbier with a sharp stop often above his nose, whereas a wolf has a long sloping muzzle. The wolf-like look comes from the fur covering his head and the small ears in relation to the skull, which make people feel that Malamutes look like wolves, when in fact if you look here, they aren't that similar. The Malamute's coats are really soft and waterproof, whereas wolves' coats are rough and wiry, as well as being thick and waterproof. Many Malamutes have shorter coats, as it's better to shed water off when working in the Arctic. A Malamute will stay thick-coated all year round, whereas a wolf has a seasonal coat, so very different coats in a way. As far as tails go, the Malamute again has a sled dog tail, which is elevated over his back. This gives him an alpha dominance look, which can be perceived as a challenge when it isn't. This is why the natural tail of the wolf is the better and more natural tail. Sadly, our dog here does not have a wolf tail. Temperament. Malamutes can be stubborn, dog aggressive and headstrong. They are affectionate to humans, but get bored easily and go away. They are also freight dogs, which means they are heavy and much slower than other sled dogs and most certainly the wolf. Wolves are flighty, nervous and skittish. They would not challenge in the same way a Malamute would and would not harm pack members, as this would stop the pack being able to survive. Malamutes are known for fighting and injuring other dogs, so not like a wolf in this way. Wolves are light-footed and fast. Malamutes have a wolf's endurance to run over miles, but their heavy build is not similar to the light and lean build that a wolf possesses. A Malamute howls beautifully like a wolf, and this is their most similar trait. So for this, we place our big bear wolf at number seven, with 40% wolfiness. Pretty wolfy, but just not quite wolfy enough to make our top five. Number six, the Siberian Husky. At number six, we have our beautiful Siberian Husky, probably the most commonly purchased dog that people think look like a wolf. This beautiful dog is a really tough Arctic breed, originating in Siberia and being able to run like the wind for hundreds of miles, while also being able to sleep in minus temperatures and hunt on his own. Height, 20 to 24 inches. Some show lines from Russia look even smaller whereas the working lines can be close to the smaller size of the Alaskan Malamute. Our 26 to 32 inch wolf towers right over even the biggest huskies. Weight, varying from a small 16 kilogram for the prettier show lines, up to 27 kilograms for the tougher working lines. 
Our wolf is 23 kilograms to 80 kilograms, so pretty much could squash our cutesy husky. Look, the main wolf-like features are the arm and eyes and the wolf-like head. But let's look closer. The blue color we often see in a husky is non-existent in a wolf, except for when a wolf pup is born. This mystical, otherworldly blue eye color, which is often used to depict wolf-like dogs, is actually totally incorrect for a wolf. The husky, like the Malamute and Canadian Eskimo, has a much smaller head and more of a stop at the top of his muzzle. The small ears give that illusion of a wolf-like head and its well-furred face also does this too. Many huskies have a face mask which people describe as being wolfy. But let's compare to a wolf and you can see that a husky's mask is far more distinct from the white tummy. Whereas the wolf's mask blends into his tummy coloration. In fact, when you really look close, the husky looks very fake coloured compared to the wolf. Human created dog colours. The tail is high like all sled dogs, which is totally non-wolfy. Yet his slender frame and long strides can look similar to a wolf's. Temperament. A husky is extremely friendly generally and would lick a burglar to death. Very unlike the untrusting nature of the wolf. He lives to run and that is all he really cares about. Oh, and hunting small animals. So the husky has the predatory nature of the wolf and the energy, but not the general character. Some huskies can wreck your home, like a wolf would, due to frustration and the need to be outdoors, and will howl a beautiful song, like our wolf friend does. And for that reason, he comes six out of 10 and scores a 50% wolfiness score. Congratulations, our much loved husky. You are around half as wolfy as a wolf. Next week in part two, we will be announcing our top five most wolfy dogs. And boy, are they going to start to get really wolfy now. Now, who will be our winner? Who will be crowned the most wolfiest dog in the world? Well, tune in to find out. And if you like this episode, remember to click subscribe by pressing the button in the bottom hand corner and make sure to give us a big thumbs up and tune in every single week where I'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, wildlife and conservation. So until next week, remember the wolf on the hill is never as hungry as the one climbing it. See you then. Bye for now.